have a memory. In fact, I, I know my first book because I still have it. In fact, in fact, I was looking at it only the other day. It's um, it's a picture book by an author illustrator with the fantastic name of Racy Helps. Um, you have to be at least fifty to remember that name. It's called. Um, Diggy takes his pick, and it was a kind of Christmas story about a mole and some hedgehogs. I, I loved it because of the illustrations, I think. In fact, the only picture books I can remember as a kid, I remember because of the illustrations. Stories didn't grab me as a kid, science grabbed me as a kid. And I read some picture books. I can remember a few what we call reading books at the time. And as soon as I could, I went on to books like Albert Hinklebein's Origins of the Universe, books called things like Prehistoric Man. For a brief period I was uh, seduced by uh, pseudoscience as well. I think a lot of a lot of people my age, particularly boys my age, uh, fell under the spell of Eric von Daniken for a while. We really did want to believe that uh, aliens built Stonehenge and created the Nazca Lions in Peru. I don't think of myself as having a distinctive style. I mean, the books I've written have been rather different. Curious was very sui generis. It was sort of like nothing else I've written, and it's rather like nothing else that anyone's written. Well, I don't say that in the sense that it's better. It was just very peculiar, wasn't it? It was very flat, very lean, and um, I couldn't have written a book in that same style. So Spotted Bottle was very different. The Red House was different again. In fact, I've been writing poetry before that. But with The Red House, I stopped writing poetry because I finally worked out a way of putting poetry into the prose. I don't think I've written a single poem since then. And I, to take that question literally, finding a distinctive voice, I think I sort of found it with The Red House. And I think there's a commonality between that book and the short stories. And I can't imagine myself moving too far away from that voice now. It feels comfortable, it feels like me. They were written over a period of about seven or eight years, mostly in response to a frustration at not being able to write short stories. And it took a very long time. Even now, I'm not sure I could write a short story at the drop of a hat. And indeed, of the nine short stories in the collection, four started as different animals altogether. One of them started as a long narrative poem and three of them started out as plays which simply didn't work. And the end of a very long and complicated and infuriating process, they ended up as short stories. Short stories which I'm very happy with but I wish I knew a quicker process. I didn't think about length for the others. The rest of the stories, you know it's hard enough writing a short story that works. It's hard enough writing anything that works. If you limit yourself with some pair of numerical handcuffs to start with. It just makes it harder. I think there's a lot of nonsense talked about the difference between novels and short stories. Quite often I think that in the same way that there are some writers who are known as writers writers, meaning that not many readers like them. I sometimes think that the short story is treated like a writer's form, meaning that not many readers like them. I think there are writers out there, and there's, a, there's some really good writers out there, but who write a kind of short story which completely fails to grip me, because it's about mood and moment, um, quite often about absence, it's often quite melancholy, it's deliberately small, almost as if it's designed not to hold the reader's attention. It's like a kind of piece of rather quiet chamber music for one instrument. I think I'm driven by a desire to write stories which are short rather than short stories. You know, think of something long and then compact it until it becomes a short story rather than dwelling on a moment or a turning point and hold the reader's attention. You have to be entertaining, if nothing else. I'm in the middle of reading The Outrun by Amy Liptrot. 
which I think is fantastic. It was on the Welcome shortlist. Um, I judged or helped judge the Welcome Prize last year, and it was a it was a really enjoyable experience. And I think from now on, I will always go to the Welcome Prize shortlist and the winner as a way of finding you know a, a small group of really good books whose quality is guaranteed. I also read The Girls by Emma Klein um, a few months ago in advance proof, but I think it, by now everyone knows that's brilliant, so I don't need to recommend that. Those are the two best things I've read recently. Oh, also The Gene by Siddhartha Mukherjee, which I think is published round about now. He wrote uh, The Emperor of All Maladies, a biography of cancer, which won the Pulitzer, and I think the Guardian First Book Award a few years ago now, and this is if you want to un understand about genetics, this is, this is the book you need.